Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, doing a very, very simple drilling jig. So one of my Patreon subscribers recently uh, wrote a note to me asking for a little bit of detail about a drilling jig that I referred to in a uh, video several years ago. Uh, it's a handle drilling jig and uh, the idea is that uh, this allows you to drill evenly spaced square holes into a handle and to the handle material. Alright, so let's take a look at the sequence of operations here. You know, what we're talking about is trying to get a functional handle with holes in the right place onto a, you know, more or less finished knife. That's our end point. But we have to start way back here with, you know, just a blank piece of steel and a piece of wood or micarta or whatever the handle material is and then some kind of fastener simplest kind of fastener would just be some sort of pin which is what we got here that's not really all that important the important point is that you want to be able to get as quickly as possible to this point where you have holes in the correct place it's really easy to miss drill these holes and end up with holes that are just a little bit off and when that happens it can make it so that you can drill the holes and the holes look like they're in the right place you stick the pins through here you stick them through there and all that and it seems like they all line up but then and this usually happens when you're slathering a bunch of epoxy all over it but you put the epoxy on there you start to put them in and then the pins won't go through or they won't line up correctly so what we're talking about here is using a piece of some other material to make a jig so that you can drill holes down through this little jig through the handle through or the handle material through your blank piece of steel and you'll end up with holes that are nice and square that are located in the correct places and that are located at the correct distance because if you can do all of those then you don't have to do this thing of stacking all kinds of stuff up and manipulating it through the drill press and drilling and putting all kinds of little pins if you have watched a lot of my videos you've seen these really complicated things where you have to drill holes put pins in flip them over move the pins uh, and it's very complicated to do if you go through that whole rigmarole, you'll get everything located correctly and it all work perfectly, but it's kind of complicated. Use a little jig like this that we're going to make today and you can avoid all that rigmarole. I'm using this piece of really rusty old precision ground 01 steel that I had lying around my shop. 01 is a useful steel to keep around because it's very easy to heat treat. Now you could make this out of mild steel and not heat treat it, but the tool's going to lose its precision and wear out quicker that way. I'll cut it to length and then mark the hole locations using layout fluid. then it's on to marking the holes. I'll use a prick punch, then work up to heavier punches. This is a good way to get accurately located holes. When accuracy and perpendicularity are important, you want to start with spotting drills and move to longer drills later. In this case, I'll start with a combo spotting drill and countersink, then move to a stub length drill. Normal length drills that you would get down at your big box store are also known as jobber length drills. The longer the drill, 
the more it deflects and the worse the problems you have with holes being out of whack. So we're choking up on our drills as much as possible, keeping them as short as we can and minimizing that deflection. I'm doing this on my cheapest, lightest drill press to show that you don't need a milling machine or some really high-end industrial drill press to do this. I put the blank in a very light, cheap milling vise. Now normally it's good practice to attach vices to tables so that the drill won't snatch them up and throw them around. But here I actually want the drill to vibrate a tiny bit and cause the vise to move slightly, which in turn will cause it to self-center. I'll clean off the burrs and then chamfer the edges of the hole by hand with this countersink. And that's really about it. If you're using mild steel, you're pretty much done. Now in this case I'm hardening the O1, which makes for a better tool in the long run. I'll be heat treating it in my forge, but you could use a torch or anything else that'll reach 1500 degrees. So I'm heating it up until it's non-magnetic, that's about 1425 Fahrenheit, then taking it up a little further, up to 1500 Fahrenheit, then quenching it in peanut oil. Now we could use a fancy industrial fast quench oil, but peanut oil will work just fine. Then I'll temper it at 375 for an hour in my heat treating oven. After a little cleanup on the grinder, it's done. Now I'll just quickly show you one way that you could use it here on this same drill press. But once you have the tool, you can set it up in just zillions of different ways. You can even do all your drilling with a hand drill now, and it'll still come out just fine with everything mating up perfectly, as long as you make sure that it doesn't move between drilling the first hole and the second. And you can do that by clamping it really hard, using locator pins, putting it in a vise, whatever suits the task at hand. Now, of course, you can do a whole family of these in different lengths. You can do them with three or four holes, different diameters, whatever you feel would be useful in the types of knives that you make. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!